Hello, my friends. How are you doing on this beautiful day in May? The very merry month of May. Well, I had a fabulous Mother's Day. I found out that other people didn't. I met a girl whose mother died and she canonized her. And I was like thinking to myself, but I couldn't bring myself to say it to her because I have compassion. Uh, I wish my mother had died. Um, that's how I did honestly feel when I was in high school. And I would have loved it. I would have loved to have had the experience of just living with my dad. But here's the deal. Like what happens if my mother, who's a narcissist pathologically so, died in high school and my father, who is possibly also narcissistic because they are um, enmeshed. What happens if he married a woman who was um, worse? I mean, he could have married Miss, Mrs. McGovern. I mean, she flirted with him enough. I remember telling her when she drove me home in her Volkswagen Beetle. You don't want to, this is in the winter time in New Hampshire. I said to her, you don't want to approach the driveway from a downhill position. So there was a downhill on my road and then you had to get to the bottom of the hill and then you'd have to go up my driveway, which was about 300 yards from the street to the house. I suggested she continued going and then did a turnaround at the entrance to the town forest, which is now multi-million dollar homes, but at the time it was the town forest. Meaning you'd have to have a four wheel drive vehicle, a dirt bike, a bike, hiking, and you could get to it. And it was quite lovely, but they sold it off, of course. And it is now for multi-million dollar homes. That's where I grew up. But at the time it was um, farmland, cow pastures, antiquity, uh, apple orchards that were no longer apple orchards that got too old to be apple orchards. Yes, I'm drinking. And swampland. I loved where we grew up. So anyway, Mrs. McGovern was unhappily married and she flirted with my husband, my mother's husband, sorry, my father. <sighs> it was crazy. So she never wanted to get into the driveway. All the other practical parents that drove me home, I would say, you don't want to negotiate a turn into the driveway from this downward hill at that angle. You want to actually go all the way down, do a three point turn at the town force entrance and then navigate up because you are more likely to actually have a success. And parents always wanted to drop you off at your front step. You would say, it's not a problem. I can actually walk up from the driveway. This is New Hampshire. Everybody had snow tires. People knew what to do. This is New Hampshire. Okay. This is New Hampshire. They know how to handle snow. They put snow tires on. They put chains. The roads are covered with snow. You drive around in it. You learn how to stop sooner than later so that you don't hit anything. Anyway, Mrs. McGovern just had to attempt the impossible in my mind with her Volkswagen Beetle bug and she goes down the hill and then she goes up into it and then of course it's going to then cause here's the momentum down up poof, plow she would get stuck 
in the snowbank alongside our driveway. And then I would have to trudge up, up, trudge, trudge, trudge on up. What I originally wanted to do, just drop me off at the end of the driveway. I can trudge up. No. She had to wait for him to come down with his ski suit on, his snow suit, his, 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 his uni suit that he would jump into. He had this uni suit, uni suit that he could just jump into and put over his clothes along with his boots. And then he could go down to the end of the driveway. And then he had a sand barrel down there and everything because he expected this SHIT. And he would shovel out the sand. <laughs> and he would help push her car out of the snowbank. And she just stood back and watched his muscles. Okay. So my father was cut and very strong and very sexy. And her husband was an alcoholic and very sexy, but she was looking to get out. And if she had been my mother, I would have had a narcissist replaced by another narcissist. And my best friend would have become my sister-in-law or something like that. Wouldn't that have been weird? So anyway, I'm making this video as a way to entertain myself and to talk to my audience and to let them know that you just keep learning. Like chronologically, I'm 60, but we all know that effective years and chronological years are two different things. Just like a house that you take care of, just like a car that you maintain well, the more you actually put into the physical vehicle, the house, the car, the body, the better off it will function. Yeah. Their parents are still alive. <laughs> Mrs. McGovern is no longer Mrs. McGovern. She's, she, she got remarried. She did divorce. My friend Kareen uh, committed suicide in 2020. And uh, life goes on. Yeah. So I've been involving myself with my world, uh, learning how to be more involved in my community. So I went to a really neat session of um, gardening and got these lovely flowers. Went for a lovely hike at uh, this place. Um, it's only 20 minutes from where I live. I just keep discovering these most magnificent things. And I'm saying to myself, have I like somehow crested into this new place of being? Has the divider been removed? Huh? Like, is there a room access code that I somehow have entered into? Because I'm honestly going to tell you, life is pretty darn cool. I'm not dating anybody. I don't want to settle. I don't want to. I will not. Well, I'll tell you this much. I'm on the app Bumble because a girl can choose that way and it's also highly unlikely I'll meet somebody that way because of the nature of Bumble. It is, it is truly a Bumble. A woman has to pay extra and a man has to pay extra in order to follow up with people that they've actually communicated with. And I refuse to pay extra. I just won't do it. I... um am on the app as a mental exercise because I get to change my photos every day if I want. I get to write something different in my 
profile if I want. I get to keep changing the presentation I have of myself. And my intention is to create more authenticity, not anything that's duplicitous. And I have been able to size up men just on how they respond to me the communication wise. Like there was a certain man who I was like gonna settle to be with. He was 63 or 64, looked much older, already had man boobs, okay? Um, and he wasn't that interesting, but I was like, huh, he has a kind face. He never showed his teeth in any of his photos. That got me worried. I was like, huh, maybe he's got, you know, terrible teeth. And, and then um, I mentioned a couple of dates to get together and then liquidly split. Um, he was filled up on one of them. I'm not judging him. I'm just saying that for me, Ease and flow shows me the way to go. And because I was already like, mm, hemming and hawing about meeting this person and that he filled in his available date that was no longer available, meaning on the calendar, not a date, but a date on the calendar. I was like, huh. And you simply unmatch. Because it was apparent that I was one of many, that he was, I don't know, involved in. There was never any personal exchange. I asked him if he had any questions for me. I asked him a question and he answered it. God, I don't remember what it was. Um, that's how impressionable he was as a human. And I'm not going to be condescending about this person and it, it doesn't um you know float with me to be mean about other people but we were definitely worlds apart like he was a manager of something he will tell me later uh and i'm like okay is he a manager of the purdue chicken factory you know why doesn't he tell? And why can't he say, I'm a manager in the food manufacturing industry? But instead, it's like he, I was like, and he went to Seton Hall. So I'm like, okay, so he's either, okay, he's just a blue collar guy. No problem. No problem. I came from an impoverished family myself. I've always thought of myself as upper crust, but apparently I'm not. Like, I'm considered perhaps as like, you know, on the other side of the tracks because I wear Doc Martens. I wear Doc Martens in the winter time because I have bunions and I will not wear heels that are gonna cripple my feet. I mean, why the, would anybody do that? They'd have to be crazy. Have to be utterly crazy. I will wear heels with open toes. The only time I wear dresses and shoes that are not Doc Martens is when it's not winter. <laughs> Speaking of which, winter brings me back to, yeah, um, Mrs. McGovern wanted to see my father shovel out her car. It was like it gave her some sort of like satisfaction or something. I remember standing there watching. I'm a child. I didn't know I was empathetic, empathic, intuitive, could feel shit. Okay, I could feel into people. I didn't know it because it was beaten out of me by my mother. Whenever I'd say something that was true, I'd get smacked across the face. So, I'm watching Mrs. McGovern watch my dad, and I can feel her lusting after him. 
And then after the second or third time she does this, my mother makes a wisecrack at dinner. And she knew what I knew. <laughs> but, but what she didn't know is that my father didn't care. He was doing the man's job, which was, there's a damsel in distress and I'm going to help her out. <laughs> so, God bless his heart, my noble father. Ah, oh, I love that man. He's still alive. I'll tell you more about that later. I talked to my parents recently. Um, my son sent them photographs of me, but not me. It was in context of their grandchild, their great-grandchild, my grandchild, Layla. And they were so tickled pink, both of them related stories that were differing, d differing in detail. One remembered three photos, one remembered a dozen photos. There were 19 photos sent. And the question goes to myself is, did they get separated? Did my father only get three photos? Were there only three photos of the grandchild? Were there only three photos of me? Were there only three photos of Ryan and me? Like, what is this memory? They have dementia. Bless their hearts. So the man who used to shovel out the Volkswagen Beetle for Mrs. McGovern in my driveway after I warned her not to do it and gave her uh, uh, tips on negotiating the driveway. And she like chose with determination to avert from those plans and instead attempt the impossible, which is to go down a hill to then turn to go up a hill to then expect that to then not go into a snowbank. All so she could see my buff cut father bail her out. Life certainly is amusing, couldn't you say?